Good morning. It is 8.47 this morning. Cloudy morning this morning. And we are headed to the RTR. Rob is speaking this morning at 10, so we got to get there and get parked and take our chairs and sit and get a good spot to to watch Rob speak. So we are about, look at my hair. <laughs> my tagline anymore. Come on, Bando! Alright, I'm about to hit the road. Here, here. 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 <laughs> He's like, I can't do it you're, today. You're on candid camera. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, yesterday, he jumped in here, look at his foot. Yeah, today he's like, uh, I'm not going to do that anymore. One, two, three. Come on. <laughs> he hates getting in. And then he's fine. Yeah. All right. You ready, Bandit? You can get back in your bed. There you go. No? Oh, you want to stay there with Sister Sam? Okay. You can All do right. that too. There's okay. Travels okay. with Dottie. Right. I, I have my earplugs in, so I can. There's Dottie. Um. Let's see. What color do I want to be? Do they still burn this? Yes. They do it here? No, I don't think here. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Here's Deborah and there's mine. And tell them what you do here for Howla. Sure, I'm their client services manager. So I manage the Bring Your Own Vehicle events, which we'll be having another one February 1st. In Port Robert? Uh, no, no, actually here. February 1st is in California. California? It's in Newport. I We're am going to California. Uh, and then we will have another one in Pahrump in April. So check out the Howla.org website for that application, which I still need to work on. Hello. Good morning. I receive the support that they need. Oh. Sorry. Yes, you do. You do. I know you do a lot. And how long have you been with that one? Uh, it was three years in December. Yeah, right. We love it. I appreciate you guys a lot. Okay. Oh, no problem. Glad we're here. Thank you. Well, that's all right. No, I'm <laughs> And your name was Dale? Yes, right. It's Dale. And you follow Frugal? That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Dale. Okay. If you want a sticker, I don't know why. There you go. I don't know why. Testing one, two, three. Now it's working. Let me get a picture of you two together. How's that? Hello, I'm Rob, and some of you may know me as Travels with Dottie on YouTube. And uh, if you're curious, Dottie is here in the front row, my moral support. Um, I'm a semi-retired licensed professional counselor, and I can give you my qualifications, where I got my graduate degree, blah, 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 blah. But the qualification that you're probably the most interested in is I've been a full-time nomad and part of this community for two years and I'm proud of that that's that's an important thing in my life um, Doc mentioned something that's really important to me this thing with mental health awareness week mental health month it all sort of implies that you have to have a diagnosis to be included i like emotional health how about that yeah we can all use emotional health i don't have generalized anxiety disorder i'm not diagnosed with that but let me tell you something i'm pretty damn anxious right now <laughs> i'm scared of all of you <laughs> i could probably fake it and you wouldn't know it but i'm that's not what i'm about Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Maybe we could have a little session afterwards to calm me down. Um, so it's, it's important real. we all can use that help. And my presentation 
is on things that I've been a that I've learned myself that I've been able to deliver to my clients that have been effective and I want to talk to you today about one of the most profound ones for me and many of my clients and it's this idea this is what I thought for most of my adult life I thought stuff happens in my world and I react emotionally to that thing that happened makes sense right something bad happens I feel bad something good happens I feel good and I discovered I was wrong that's not true and you're probably thinking what do you mean it's not true sounds true but there's a critical step missing in that process here's how I found out it really works something happens in the world we think about it and create meaning around that thing we figure out what it means to us and our emotions come from the meaning that we create and i'm going to i'm going to prove that to you right now i'm going to give you a hypothetical example let's say someone comes up to you and says you know what a man died yesterday think about what emotional reaction you're going to have to that not much of one, right? You're going to say, well, that's too bad, but that's a fact of life. People die every day. Then if they said, well, that person was your father, boom, huge reaction, right? It, you're going to feel grief and anxiety and sadness and all kinds of intense things, right? Then the person says, well, hang on a second. That guy had the same name and date of birth as your father, but it wasn't your father, and your dad walks around the corner. What happens to those intense emotions? They evaporate immediately in a nanosecond. They're gone. Yet the thing that happened in the world did not change. A man died. Your interpretation changed. So you're probably asking, well, how's that valuable? It's valuable because, well, let's just say this what we refer to as negative emotions like sadness and anxiety and anger and stuff they're okay it's part of being a human being you can't avoid those feelings completely as a human being but what i'm telling you you can do you can avoid those feelings sometimes when they're unnecessary and they can become unnecessary because as human beings the meaning that we make of things we suck at it we're not very good at it. We're not very disciplined. At least I wasn't, all right? So how can we be, become better? In the example, someone says, your dad died. Well, who are you? Where did you get your information? Um, asking questions instead of leaping to the conclusion, I'm, I become curious. I've, I have a wonderful quote from Walt Whitman be curious, not judgmental. Judgmental people don't ask questions. Curious people ask questions. They're curious. They want to know about the world. They want to know about the information that they're getting. And if somebody told me my dad died and I started asking questions, I might, I might find out they're mistaken. So I completely avoid that sort of emotional suffering. Right? Emotional suffering is part of being human, but we don't have to sit in emotional suffering unnecessarily. When we become vigilant and we become deliberate about how we interpret things and we become good interpreters by being curious. Oh, my friend is mad at me. She hates me. Does she? Well, let's be curious. Maybe I'll ask her. Maybe I'll have a conversation and I'll find out I misinterpreted what she said or what he said or the text that came through. I'm curious and I don't rush to judgment. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing once you discover that. And I'll tell you how nervous I am. I was going to set a timer <laughs> and I totally forgot. Can you help me out, Brett, and tell me to shut up when my 10 minutes are up? No, got you got a timer there. Okay, just say something. I'm capable of talking not long enough and talking. 
They both got me. My buddies got me. I, I'm capable of error in either way. I do have a list of things to cover, though. Um, so human beings, you and me, are capable of believing anything. Human beings are capable of be believing anything. In World War II, the Japanese kamikaze believed that he would be awarded in the afterlife if he would crash his plane into an aircraft carrier. He believed that. It became who he was. And you and me are capable of believing anything. And the source of what we believe, guys, this is so amazing, is what we think. Our thoughts become what we believe, and we become what we believe. So how important are our thoughts, especially the thoughts about ourselves, the conversations that we have in our head, right? We are capable of believing anything about ourselves, which, you know, this was an amazing coincidence. At three o'clock today, on this side, Kristen, who's, raise your hand, Kristen, is having what she's calling a happy thought workshop, right? And this is so important to start injecting positive thinking into your mind about yourself. You know who, I'm looking at all of you, most of you I'm willing to bet the person that you were the hardest on is you. You are the most critical of you. You think these things about yourself that aren't true. They're lies about you. Think you create lies about yourself, yourself and you believe them. You become judgmental about yourself and about the world. And you forget, and don't forget my Walt Whitman's quote, be curious, not judgmental. Be curious, be a curious, don't be a judgmental people, person, be curious. And I have to remind myself of that. Like, I'm a therapist, and you don't think I'm a mess? I learned in grad school that everybody, everybody in class in grad school to become a therapist was there because they had big troubles and a therapist saved them. That's, that's why most of them are there, including me. A therapist shifted my world to a positive thing when I was 12 years old. And it threw out my adult life. I said, I want to do that. I want to be that. That's what, I want to be that for somebody. Um, that Walt Whitman quote, I got that, not from Walt Whitman, I got that from an Apple TV series called Ted Lasso. And um, this TV series, I was dubious about the... the, the the, the premise of it, and I wasn't interested, and I just, I've heard so much about it, I forced myself to watch it. It changed my life, and it changed the way I do therapy. They threw out a Walt Whitman quote, but it's not as profound as the quote written by the writers of that story that I'm going to read to you, and I'm going to have a hard time because um, I get teary every time I read this. So give me a minute here. So I'm going to set this up. Ted, the main character, is a, a, an athletic coach, and his team had just lost a really important game. They were dejected. They were down. And he walks into the locker room, and you're wondering, he's got this, he's this great coach. What is he going to say? And this is what he said. You know what I want to mess with? The belief that I matter, regardless of what I do or do not achieve, or the belief that we all deserve to be loved, whether we've been hurt or maybe we've hurt someone else, or what about the belief of hope? That's what I want to mess with, believing that things can get better, that I can get better, that we can get better together. To believe in yourself, to believe in one another, that's fundamental to being alive. And guys, it is fundamental to the nomad community. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of this community, because we are together. Thank you.
Let's give it a one more time for yeah. these guys up here. All right. We finished. <laughs> that was nachos.